Hello, fellow denizens of the web. How are you guys doing out there? This is the skill based mini cast. And before we get into it, last one of these horror rants I'm going to be allowed to do. Brandon's pulling the plug on me after this one. But until then, we have an absolute lineup of bangers to get to today because our horror game experience goes way more extensively than all of us thought. We're running a short cast, so hopefully that will give us a pl plenty of time to talk. So let's get right into it tonight, everybody. Starting things off with Siegeland. Hello. Always, mm. always, always good to have you here. Uh, Brandon? Mm, yes. Mm. Hello. I hate you guys because in like two minutes when someone drops a horror indie classic game from like a PS2, you're going to be yelling and tripping over each other and shit. Well, <laughs> with mm. that being said, we are getting right into it because I love horror games and horror movies and some very gothic art styles. And October really is the best time to enjoy all of these things. You could just binge this stuff and not look like a total psycho. Like I don't know what you mean by that. I do it all the time. Why are you going to attack me like that? 100%. <laughs> Look me in the eye and tell me you ain't never been judged. I can't. You're in another room. I can see your stupid capybara face lighting up when you talk. <laughs> I okay. What are we talking about? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get back on topic here. Last time we ended off, there was a bit of a, a a laugh between all of us as I had put something in my cart on eBay. And on the recommendation of Brandon the Drava himself, I did check it out. And I gotta say, man, I was not disappointed. Ed Space Extraction, a name I've never formally heard out loud until the last minicast. Oh my word, folks. This is how we're starting off a conversation about horror games. This shit was Dead Space to the core. I I couldn't even feel good comparing it to a rail shooter because it is one. This is the best thought out rail shooter I think I've ever seen. It's standard runtime, four and a half hours long. The horror gets you exactly two minutes and 56 seconds into the start of the game. And it pulls no punches. Your tutorial character, bam, dead. Everybody you start seeing in every cutscene after that, bam, dead immediately. Body horror, ambience, a horrible windstorm on a desolate rock, and you're trying to defend yourself with a pickaxe that has a laser point on it and a bolt gun. This game sells you everything and i realized i said bolt gun instead of rivet gun i've been playing too many uh yeah, that was weird. games lately it's workshop please don't sue the topical humor in the year of 2021 but moving on brandon like thank you for that recommendation that was too much fun and i even threw it all the way i think we're maybe an hour in and the game's just been balls to the walls from the second that start screen hit yeah fucking I remember playing that years ago when I was a kid. Literally, like before you even had access to the internet, I saw that at a GameStop. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy that and I'm going to enjoy it. And I freaking did. But not only that, I believe um, a week or so, or sometime after that, I also saw another real shooter that I didn't know existed. But it was part of a series that I enjoyed very much so i still do to this day it was a resident evil dark side chronicles and oh man and i didn't know this thing existed i didn't know that there was even a rail shooter for resident evil but then this um, thing comes around and i'm like bl blown away I had to buy it and i'm gonna be did real you like it i did i did especially when i was playing with my cousin I mean, sure, it definitely is different, just like the, the um, Dead Space one. It isn't your typical Resident Evil game, just like the Dead Space Extraction. It's just a real shooter. All you're doing is pointing at the screen with your little Wii remote or whatever and shooting zombies and fucking monsters and shit. But it was fun. I would say most of the game kind of recaps... Um, like a shorter version or a shorter version of uh, the f like first Resident Evil was of two and three, and then there are other um, sections where it's an, there was like an actual original story to it. Like it's its own little thing. If I'm gonna be real, I think it's supposed to be prequel to Resident Evil Four, 
because it has Leon and Krauser. If anyone has ever played Resident Evil 4, you Jack know Krauser. Krauser? Oh, Jack Krauser. I haven't heard that name in so long. Let me get that beret and that knife. Yeah, literally, he, your partner, the second player, can play as Jack Krauser and you're, you as Leon or vice versa or whatever. And this is literally right before Resident Evil or before Jack Krauser apparently dies and you find them in Resident Evil 4 or whatever. But it's a, it's a nice little prequel to Resident Evil 4 and it's amazing. Yeah, that I've a lot never of heard Evil. of this game before. Really? What was it? Yeah. We mm-hmm. live in the same house. How did you not know about this? I don't know. I'm not the sharpest person. I it's Resident Evil on. Dark Side um, Chronicles for the Wii. Yeah. I I do recommend it. It's it a is, fascinating it's a, game, it really it's is. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's fun. It, it is it's just a fun game. And you think I've beat it multiple times and just cause I was bored and I wanted to have some fun. I mean that's kind of the way to do it with little <coughs> off the random games like that. You just kinda like jump into them, you know? Honestly, you don't go in expecting a AAA title. You go in expecting a grindhouse rail shooter, and that's what you're going to get. I was going to say, if you're expecting a AAA title for a rail shooter in general, I don't know what you think you're playing, but... Mm. Yeah, you ain't going to get that, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. I Except for know, Mass Effect Andromeda. Know. That was a AAA rail shooter. That game fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Don't even start your shit already. It's too early for this. It's, well, fuck, you want to talk about a horror game? That game was terrifying. I didn't think something could be so Stop bad. It. Stop right, it. Moving on. Uh, Sorry, but, what the fuck are we talking about? A lot of gaming corporations. <laughs> oh. But uh, anyways, is there any other <laughs> games out there that you guys want to shout out? Like, um, I know I, I've said uh, quite a few here, but is there anything that sticks sticks out? Two on you know? the back burner. Adrian. What's that? I said I got two in the back burner. Do you want to go first or do you want to let it roll? No, go for it. Because I'm trying to think of the name of the one I'm thinking of and it's not. Coming, so all right we're gonna start out with one that i really oh man i it's such a guilty it's not even like true horror don't get me wrong if you play this when you were like seven or eight you'd probably fuck you up because that's what happened to me um anyone else remember there's the golden age of the ps2 uh suffering ties that bind it was also on the original xbox i believe as well oh shit yeah i never played it i've heard of it but i, I never played it myself so in, in the same vein as Clive Barker's Jericho, almost the same like gameplay style, the way they really, really well blend action and horror. You play a inmate who goes to a, a supermax prison, which it's a dated supermax prison. So it looks like Alcatraz, but in the middle of Kansas. And when you get there, ghosts and demons and start everything you can imagine breaking in from hell and taking over the prison and you have to fight your way to escape and the whole time you're like being targeted specifically by them and eventually this ghost doctor gives you the power to turn into your demon form which is your true self and you can get all super strong like hulk and rip people in half and throw shit through walls it is such a grindhouse style game it is fantastic it is beautiful and the creatures are terrifying because they're all gimmick based on some kind of like horror gimmick that whatever the writer said, that's what went. So there's creatures called hangmen that actually hang by nooses and teleport through the walls and try to like grab you and what uh, while other pe- creatures pin you and like beat you down, kind of like a Left for Dead kind of shit. There's um, sergeants that were known for being in charge of uh, what's it called the firing squads. So they have like all these crazy turrets and machine guns sticking out of their backs and shoulders and they'll just light you up. It is such a, I can't even describe it clearly. It's such an insane concept and it just does everything it tries really damn well. Yeah, interesting. I'm surprised <laughs> I never really heard of that game only by name. I mean, it's one of the ones that it, just kind of flew under the radar. It came out like, in weird times. Very. I think it was it, that could be totally off here. I think it came around the uh, time Jack and Dexter and Ratchet and Clank were picking up steam on the uh, you, PS2. You sales. know what? That probably could be so. why. And it just got swept under the carpet, which unfortunately happens compared a lot. Compared to legendary, yeah, legendary titles like that are going to do that to anything that comes out around them. Yeah, those games are. 
Ugh, those are some highlighted games, man. To this day, highlights of the PlayStation system. But um, honestly, uh, Adrian, have you thought about the uh, game you're talking about? Yes, I remembered what it was, and I don't, I don't care that it technically doesn't really count as a horror game. That shit was terrifying. I don't know if you'd ever played this, Brandon, but I know Mikey has. It's a game called Run Like Hell. No, <laughs> that game. You never played. Oh, I man. actually never heard of it before. What? Okay, so you want? Do you ever just want to know what it's like to just have a heart attack? Play Run Like Hell. The whole premise is, and this is probably like a fifteen-year-old memory. So I'm gonna have Mikey correct me if I'm wrong, which I'm sure I will be. Gotcha. The most, the most simple premise of the game is there. It's like an obstacle course slash puzzle course. And you have to get from the beginning to the end. Meanwhile, monsters are just fucking chasing you. Constantly. And they generally look terrifying. Like, I remember one kind of vividly where it's just kind of like a T-Rex looking thing, but its claws are like the length of its fucking body. And I... I, mm, I mm. Yeah, I'm looking at I, I, the cover right here. Are you looking it up? <laughs> I'm looking at the cover right here and I'm like, damn, this actually looks terrifying <laughs> if you yeah. you're playing this as a kid. Oh, dude, I was like six. <laughs> yeah, I can see why it would be terrifying. The fuck? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we um did not make good choices as children. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know what it is about this game that just like, just, I just don't know what it is in general, really. Okay, so just one of those things mean? where it makes Sorry. you wonder how things get made, and everyone's just like, yeah, sounds good. Put it, put it down. Let's make it. Is it to have fun? No, not really. It's just, you know... To cause stress. Terrible. It's just terrible. <laughs> okay, so the game's made in a different style. Do you mind if I, I chime, in, chime in with the... Like I said, right dude, now? I was like six. Go for it. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, man. So this game was made on an interesting concept of an alien invasion is taking over a station of some kind. The specifics are lost to my memory. But you're a... Uh, a young action hero teenager from the 90s, of course. Uh, straight-laced, blonde hair, jacked for no inherent reason. And while this invasion's happening and the station's st- slowly turning over, getting taken over, this... Yep, there's the artwork right there. This alien I... race starts like trying to hunt you down. And I want to say 70% of the time, you're not properly equipped to fight them. You have to run. You have to. It use never felt like you were equipped to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was really uncommon. The whole premise of this game was survive, like a Warhammer objective. It objective survive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it it didn't say, oh, you're gonna be the action hero. It's like if you play this right, you will see another day. If you don't, you will fucking not. And I promise you that. And what, the graphics didn't do it justice because it really drove home the fact that you were underpowered. You've got to think smart about this. And reasonably, the most effective way to play this game is to bide your time, move through the environment carefully, and pay very close attention to the creatures' attack and chase patterns because they will fuck you up if they get your hands on you. Yeah, if I had to guess, this is probably the game I died most in in my entire life. And I've played a lot of very, very unforgiving games. One thing I will say Capcom could have done better when they developed this. Capcom made this. Yeah. What? Capcom. And that's what oh, and that's even out. that's even more yes. of a surprise that I never heard of this game. <laughs> One thing they could have done better is make the tips clear because they didn't help for shit. It yeah. could have been a translation because yeah. this game was developed elsewhere. <laughs> but they literally just gave you terrible directions of it to uh, the emitter. And you're like, what the fuck is an emitter? Where am I going? And then there's just a blip on this zigzag of a map that looks like a corn maze. And you're like, well, fuck. That map before was a to- nightmare to navigate. And that sucked. To think, there's just a boom, boom, boom. And there's this like forearm gorilla alien with a Gatling gun chasing your ass down. And you're like, well, fuck. I guess I I'll hated die. that shit. I don't know why you guys <laughs> let me play that. I really don't. You wanted to? I fair. And that shit was fucked up. You know, honestly, I think it, it 
it deserves to be like a true horror game because while it's not inherently like a terror theme, it did something so well that other games nowadays, and this, I'm going to kick on a couple newer games nowadays that they just can't do. It built suspense. It made you worry about the situation you were in constantly. Like Honestly, stress level 100 over here constantly, just all the time. It's terrible. You know, I'm talking about this game. Uh, I'm sorry to cut in here, but like that premise of basically run or in, in like how? A, lot, a lot of these games um, or hide because mm-hmm. there are two games that come to mind when it comes to that type of shit. And it's those horror games that don't give you the option to really fight back. And if you can, there it's in ways that the, I guess, monster or whatever is trying to kill you, you can't really kill it. All you can really do is make it go away for a while. But then it'll just come right back and try to kill you again. And it just really gives me that alien isolation and like Outlast vibes. Yeah, very much yeah. so. Very I'd much. actually go as far as to call this the original Outlast. But like, that's actually yeah. something I wanted to bring up after this uh, talk about this game, but it just the similarities are so that much there that I just can't help but just bring in Alien Isolation, which I feel is one of the best horror games to come out in recent years. And it came out yeah, in 2014. That's six years, what, six, seven? <laughs> Good game. Seven oh years. Said it recent years. Motherfucker, that was almost a decade ago. Yeah, it's fucking seven yeah, years recent. ago. Fucking seven years <laughs> ago, and it's one of the best ones still to this day. Yo, Brandon really just said horror games suck these days. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I ain't getting scared you know by none of these he fuckers. Ain't wrong. I ain't getting he ain't wrong. <laughs> I ain't That's why I don't like games. Resident Evil anymore. You can kill the enemies. I don't like that. I like a horror game that, where it's always like there. A fucking action hero. I, I I also don't like that about the new Resident Evils. You, it, they are just action games. Yeah, I'll give you that. I mean, Resident Evil 7, I feel, was the more... Dude, that was good. The st- was more good. stressful good. one out of the two that came out. Uh, RE8 Village basically felt like a first-person Resident Evil 4, which is not bad. It is still a good game, but yeah. it is not a scary game. Quick, quick. No, it's not. <clears throat> question about that game. Yeah, what's up? Without getting into spoilers, because you, you've seen the last level, correct? I have played the entire thing. What the hell is with that final boss battle? That was an acid trip. That, that was weird. That was weird. There's that so much like going on. A, <laughs> it felt like something from a Dead Rising game. Dead Rising 4 specifically. Oh, man. That's there, was a, there was a lot, of, a lot going on in that last one. I... I don't get me wrong. I thought it was a good game. I thought it was a good concept, but it got so weird on me, and I just... <sighs> I don't know. I wouldn't even, like... Yeah, I, I have such a hard time classifying it, because it doesn't keep me gripped in horror the whole time. It, like, leads into Killer Clown from Outer Space Goofy very quickly. I will... Hey, appre- I, like I do movie. appreciate uh, the... the movie. It's not, like, scary unless you're I don't know, DJ, and you're afraid of clowns. I do appreciate the section with the the doll uh, enemy, you know, where you're in that little right. um, puzzle area and, like, that fucking baby monster comes out of fucking nowhere and it, you can't do anything but just run. Yep. I appreciated that. At first, it caught me hella off guard just seeing that fucking thing come around the corner. It's making baby fucking noises. And I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of creepy. I'm going to run the other way now. I'm telling you, man, body horror is where it's <coughs> at. But, like, and- yeah, but literally, um, just RE7, great game. Good good horror game. Uh, But yeah, RE8, RE8 is definitely on more of the RE4 vibes where it... It has horror aspects or elements, but it is more actiony. Yeah, Resident Evil Eight felt like it was written by Clive Barker, but directed by Michael Bay, and I didn't like that. <laughs> what? 
Am I wrong? Am I, I wrong? In thinking that. That? It kind of feels like that. that. I don't know about the Michael Bay part, but I, I can see what you you're doing. You have a lawnmower that shoots rockets. Yeah. I don't even remember that. I don't think I ever got that one. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really I do I didn't do a second playthrough. So it's kinda like yeah. Also Fair. shout out to for having fucking sound bites from Dead by Daylight in there. That was cool. What? They have uh Meg Scream when you enter uh, one of the mansion rooms, I think. That's funny. They did the crossover with them. Oh by the way, anyone that shit a horror game, you're wrong. But um No? Thinking that, all right, fuck me. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I didn't really know what you said. Um, like anyone who thinks Dead by Daylight's still a horror game, you're just wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're wrong. It's a spooky party game. The only one I, Brandon's ever played. I wouldn't even call it a party game because in a party game, someone at least wins. No one wins in that game. I'm, no. Listening to DJ and uh, Wolf panic <gasps> and scream at top volume, you're not winning. Don't lie to me like that. Yeah, but that's in a custom game. We're talking about regular games. Okay, regular games or anything is pretty ridiculous regular these days. Games. Have you ever played a casual siege match? I stopped playing siege a year ago. Wait, there's such a thing as a casual siege match? No. Yeah, it's called recruit. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you recruit rush and just crush a platinum player. No, recruit the game mode you get up to like level twenty or some shit. Oh that no uh, one ever yeah. did because it was impossible to find a lobby. Uh, all right, before we start bashing on Ubisoft's child, um, while we're on the topic of Resident Evils and all that, there is one special highlight of Resident Evil 4 that to this day fucking gets me. And I'm sure other players are out there when they get to that level, they fucking hate it. I think I know what you mean now. I already know. Go ahead. You don't say what I think you're going to say. I'm going to be mad. So you get to the lab and you get to cold storage. Yeah. And you see the creature all splayed yeah. and laid out on the table. The Iron Maiden is one of the most... I don't know what it is. It's such a well-designed creature and combat encounter. The first time you play it... And unless you, like, Frasier and looked up a guide, because that's the kind of player he is. He's not here to no defend comment. himself. Um, <laughs> this thing heals every time you deal any bit of damage to it. It is an absolute... Bullet sponge. It can hit you with every single part of its body, so disabling it's useless. And that horrible dead silence, and just with that raspy gasping and breathing it makes as it chases you everywhere, is the fucking worst. I I hate the creature design. I hate the audio design. And when you fall on top of one and it starts chasing you through the sewers and basement, god damn it with that bloody like spike design it is the worst man oh I, my God. I will give them props for that that shit still fucks me up to this day the, the regenerators oh, the regenerators body I, horror <laughs> body horror ah, dude, but the yeah. regenerators when I was a kid and I first ran into that shit I I literally put down the controller turned off my playstation 2 and just walked away I just that's I need I need I like needed that. a minute. I needed a minute. <laughs> I was that's like fair. that's one hundred percent fair. I was like twelve, thirteen. And I was like, I just I need a minute. I need to walk away. And I'm, I'm gonna go play some basketball outside. I don't, I need a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna do a pickup game. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but like, when I went back to fight that thing, the moment I killed it, after it, you know made me into a pincushion like two times uh fucking it felt good but like oh my god this thing is creepy the noises that really got me and the way it shakes its body the, the, the little sh- like little shake as it's that's breathing that's fascinating to it gy- gyrating as it were <laughs> but, well okay oh my god. before this goes into shit post territory that's a real the name word, escapes but... me. Shut up. Um, the name escapes me. I did some research into this a while ago because I get bored sometimes. And instead of looking up TikTok, I look up weird facts on the internet. There is a condition in our brain that is in all of us. It's an evolutionary trait. If you don't believe that, fuck it. Go argue with the scientist that wrote it. I just read it. Um, 
if see if we see something that looks human but doesn't act like it, our brain automatically triggers a fight or flight response because that's not natural. We're programmed to look out feature look for features that make us see that that's a human. So that's why people who have the um oh man, what's the horror movie gimmick where there's always that one person who possessed and they just don't move naturally like maybe they're stepping funny or they're too rigid. Yeah. It sells terror to the audience without the audience ever knowing it. They're just like uneasy. And the regenerator does that so well because it keeps this cold, calm stride. And then it's just gasping and spasting at like a mil- or twitching at a million and that miles an hour. Mouth and- that's like halfway oh, yeah. up its fucking face. <laughs> that parasite oh, head God, where it just that. opens up like an umbrella. And that's what we call good design. God, I love that shit. By the way, Absolutely. to anyone who's listening to this, there is going to be a playthrough of the VR version of RE4 whenever it releases. And I. Yes. I cannot wait to play this game in VR. And I swear to fucking God, when I see a regenerator, I'm going to throw my damn quest out the window. <laughs> what that means is that we're just going to be sitting there laughing at Brandon the whole time, giving him bad information. Oh my god. I'm going to have to oh, see man. that shit in VR. I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, I, that's it. <laughs> I can't even. Fuck. I don't even want to put myself in that headspace. I really don't. That or the gator. I don't trust gators as they are right now. I don't need a 50-foot one with tentacles rolling out of its mouth. Uh, just the movie Tremors. Adrian, you remember when we saw that uh, 25 foot came in in the uh, Safari yes. Reserve Park? Yes. Yeah, that was a big song, bitch. He looked like he was from a horror movie. I mean, they are quite literally <laughs> dinosaurs, so, you know. <laughs> that yeah. one was a fucking dinosaur, dude. All the other, every other reptile in that enclosure stayed the fuck away from that guy. They knew what was going to happen if they yeah, got he's probably his the, face. He's probably the oldest motherfucker there. He was the boss, man. They didn't fuck with him. Honestly. Apex Predator. I don't need to see that in VR. He's, no. the, he's the apex predator of the Predators. Seriously. Oh, man. I, I am so looking forward to that playthrough. I can't wait for it. I'm going to get a VR set and get that game for myself, but it ain't going anywhere. Nobody needs to see me in that condition. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to. I'm going to put my, screaming. I'm going to put myself through some torture for the God. fucking channel. For the content. For the content. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! It. it. <sighs> I think crowdfund a VR setup for Carnival because I think that's what started this whole thing for me. Oh, can, we, can we just crowdfund Carnival to come back, like at all? I'm can down. we do that? Can we just start making more of those, please? Someone out there has to have the code. You know what Carnival is? Like, I, I before I went on this, I mindset. don't. What? Oh. Ah. Okay, oh, this is just another thing where I've heard by name but never played or seen anything of it. Adrian, do you want to take this one? I I'm furious right now. Hold up. <laughs> is that Carnival, a or is that a... Carnival is one of the best arcade cabinet shooters ever made second only to house of the dead three am i thinking of the right one i don't know i'm just gonna say that i'm right in assuming it's three that i like better than four i don't remember which, which gun were you using four was uzi's right uzi was four yeah i like three then all right um hard. yep that's the one what the fuck are we talking right carnival so mm-hmm. basically it has one of I don't remember a lot of things. My memory, not good. I remember every single second to the intro of Carnival because I've probably seen it a thousand times. Because we it's would just play day. that shit so... Yeah, we literally watched a playthrough of it like a week ago because we just love that shit. Me and Mikey just watch arcade cabinet playthroughs all the time just because we like that, that shit. Um, the most... Carnival is like the most... You would almost assume it's like a C-list horror movie with how bad this premise is. You're on a haunted cornfield ride, and people get off the ride because there's an ancient urban legend of on a full moon on Halloween night, a grave 
appears and it has a jester's skull on it or sculpture of a jester's head and a coin and if you put the coin in his mouth it comes alive and takes you away to carnival and that happens literally like almost exactly people get off the ride they go to the grave they put the coin in his mouth the head becomes animate and it literally like lights up in color and it flies away and then a carnival literally like erupts from the dark oh my god wait a second I have played this exactly I don't give a fuck if you think you haven't played it everyone should have played carnival that game was so good Granted, I didn't play it nearly as much as you, but it does seem very fucking familiar because only place that I, as a kid growing up, had access to that t- those type of games was at a place called Castles and Coasters when I lived in Arizona. But I do remember that game. I, I remember there being lines for that shit. And I played it like maybe once or twice. Oh, it, me and Mikey would be the so dickheads that hog the line. Oh, that I would be the cool. guys who went through two bosses on a fucking 50 cent uh, stack, and that was it. Yeah, we would beat like half the two thirds of the game on like two quarters. We we played it so much. Oh, yep. I, I remember not- that freaking machine. There it is. There, it, there is. it is. It's one of those games where it's like it's meant to be a horror game, but oh man, there's just something. There's just something about the campiness of a horror carnival. It just makes me smile. It, there's just something almost wholesome about it. Because it's just like, oh man, the vented carnival. Whoa, crazy, wacky, hello. I just love it. It's it's just almost, it's almost like dark comedy at like its finest. It's not offending anybody. It's not like horribly grotesque. It's not like soul-wrenchingly terrifying. It's just campy. But it's also effective because some of those shots were kind of gross. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. You went to see the bearded lady and she exploded in a maggot. That was not fun. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that. Yeah. Like, I don't think it, anyone enjoyed that part. <laughs> what about Santa Claus? I didn't mind Santa Claus. But man, good character design. If you can call uh, it character design. While I was getting this thumbnail, I put in the Discord. You guys want to hear a crazy fact I found? Uh. Much like regular game ratings, arcade cabinets have their own. Want to guess what Night Carnival averages? 120%. That have purchased it? Huh? 120%. No, but. Brendan? Uh, 75%. 94% positive feedback average. I was closest. <laughs> Went over Price is Right rules. Yep. Not, dude, that is insane for it's company. For, it really is, man. It the art style. If you see that cabinet, see all like the very twisted carnival aesthetic. I the Psycho Circus and Dark Carnival aesthetic is something that stayed with me my whole life at this point. This is where it got started. And then you could pick up the brightly colored green and purple. Because they didn't have regular light guns. They had shotguns that actually had a functioning slide so you can actually pump it. Functioning is a loose term. (laughs) They were usually broken. This game caught a lot of use, folks. Like, this motherfucker was a quarter devourer. It was I'm pretty confident me and Mikey were responsible for the broken pumps at our local carnival. We (laughs) played that game a lot. Oh, it was made by Midway, too. Man, I haven't seen that developer mm-hmm. in a wa- long That's time, long. That's how you know dude. it's good. That's how you know it's, it's going to be good. Fucking it's Midway. quite literally a Midway carnival game. About a carnival. It was so fun. Our local fair actually had an arcade tent, and that was in the very back, and it just felt so right with those crazy, like, I don't even know what material those tents are made of. It is bulletproof. You can't hear shit outside. Except for yeah. all like the lights and the clattering of machines in the distance, and it's so much fun to be in that mindset, hyped up on sugar because you just had a fuck ton of cotton candy, <laughs> just blowing cord, rounds down range at demented clowns. Oh, what a great game! Can we bring? Like I said, can we just bring that back, please? We need more. Anybody of that. in the cosmos hears us? Free MVC two and Carnival. We need them both. We need them both back. The heydays. 
Can we also um, start a petition to f- make VR House of the Dead come on? Please. <laughs> I need it in my life. Can we just make a can we just remake House of the Dead one? Like that just that one. The there's, rest there's, are okay. There's a VR port that just shit. <laughs> I don't even want the VR port to have better graphics. I want to be. I want it to be the same dog shit. <laughs> same. <laughs> I don't want the same voice acting. That's for sure. You're not allowed to change that. Crank that microphone up. My uh, God. Man, do you know what you're doing? Oh. Uh, Until you guys get to uh, the final level of our D and D campaign, and you're just like. Why would you do this? And I hit you with the dead ass stone face to protect the life cycle. Cycle, dude. The <laughs> moment V fucks up, I'm just gonna just deadpan. Do you know what you're doing? It's <laughs> uh, gonna be great. And the actually, best part is, he's not gonna get the joke. Yeah. Uh, that actually, quick side note, because I know this has been a fucking off the rails ride. Yeah, because this has been a long side note. So let's just keep going. What's up? Um, the whole Dark Carnival aesthetic has just stuck with me, th- with me through the years. Like, I know the people, and I'm not gonna type try and like put things out there. It's so, like I'm typecasting. You can usually tell who's into Psycho Circus kind of shit because they unironically own a killer clown mask. You usually uh, listen to ICP and Ice Nine Kills. <laughs> it's crazy how we have to describe DJ. And they usually have a corn beanie that they bought in 2008. So <laughs> that was painfully accurate. I know like 12 people like that. I, I don't. You can see him. You know who it is. And well, I've never been that guy. I truly love the aesthetic. It has stuck with me for so long. Even my last D and D character, while they were still a chaotic good character, was heavily influenced by the dark carnival aspect. And our DM at the time went his own way with it. And retrospectively, looking back, I am very happy with where it went because it went full circle from like the during the daytime business as usual, family friendly carnival to at night criminals and mystical powers from other planes influencing things and done things quite as it seems. I don't know why that style has always got me. And then me, a normal human that shoots arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you were there too. <laughs> I helped. <laughs> we have any other throwback nostalgia trips down memory lane we want to get out before we got to wrap things? Um, um, I have one. But Brandon, do you? No, go for it. Okay. It's not a horror game, but does anyone remember how terrifying it was to play Left 4 Dead for the first time ever? I remember how terrifying it was to get hit by a hunter with no warning. That was great. Exactly. Do you remember the first time you encountered every special infected for the first time? A witch. <laughs> a fucking that, witch. <laughs> that was horror. Or just. If you ever want to relive that horror, make your witch Waluigi with mods. Oh, no. How about this? You're going down. the. It's the first literal chapter. No mercy. You're going down the alleyway on that one. I think it's like the first time. You're going down the alleyway. You go into the street. All of a sudden, you hear. The fucking like trumpets, and you see this big hulking mass of fucking muscle coming down the alleyway, screaming and throwing his fists around. <laughs> the, the first time you saw that, that fucking tank, that ugh. that was horror. Oh, Man, I mean, I, I love back, I love Left for Dead, and Back for Blood is a great successor to it. Yeah, you guys have been playing it a lot. You enjoying it? I'm loving it. Although yeah, I do, yeah, I do wish that they made a action like a versus mode, like they did in Left 4 Dead, where people can control the specialist <sighs> during the that campaign. But swarm mode, it's all right. You know, but I prefer the for the campaign. I, I love the difficulty of it. I love how how much harder they made it. I've been hearing that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what have you been playing with us? Uh, I've been grinding the shit out of Cyberpunk. Fair, that's a good answer. I mean, I haven't even done, like, the fourth main mission, and I'm already, like, street cred 43. Jesus. Damn, you and right. What? Anyways, 
I don't want to put you guys on blast, but how about we end this one a little different? Mm. What do you get a recommendation for everybody from a horror game we haven't talked about yet? That with no context, <sighs> you just recommend people. I already know, man. Amnesia. Oh, damn. Brandon's swinging. You know what? Fair. That's a good one. If you have a PC, play that shit. Or actually, no, there's a console port now, right? On Xbox? There is. Play I that shit. Play that shit. It is a classic. People, that shit was hot on YouTube way back in the day. And I recommend, I personally haven't played it, but I recommend it because I've seen all the playthroughs of people playing that shit. And it is genuinely a suspenseful psychological horror. It's amazing. Hell yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Adrian? Uh, Power Drill Massacre. God damn. Yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> You said no context. <laughs> yeah, no context. That's I should have known. How do I do this to myself? Yeah, I don't, right. I don't know what you expect from me. All right, Mikey. If you're a fan of storytelling and telltale series and well-written suspense, I gotta say, uh, Call of Cthulhu is fantastic. You really get the effect storytelling and just atmosphere that only Lovecraftian horror can bring without the drama or issues that the original writer has. So I recommend everybody try it. The content is going to be pretty dark and very real. So there's your warning. And I mean, it's Halloween. Why not? It's like a $7 game on most uh, digital download services. It's on almost all of them. So give it a shot. All right. We weren't applying context, but whatever. That one I'm going to because for those of you who know, Lovecraft is a very troubled individual, and he was a troubled individual in a very dark time of our actual existence. So recommending his work is hard without warning people because they might find the wrong stuff and be like, hey, what the fuck is this? And I'll be like, I swear that was not on That's fair. That's fair. That dude was wild. and This is fucking... Yeah, he crazy. did not have a good life. He did not have a good mind, and he was not in a good period of time. No, it, yeah, you get fair. what you get. Meanwhile, I'm over here recommending VHS horror, but whatever, fuck me. <laughs> Anyways, we're running way over our usual time. It's been a blast, folks. One more good night from the boys. Adrian, start getting us rolling. Good night, Brandon. Let's see ya. Happy Spooktober. And I have been Mikey, wishing you folks a very good October and be safe out there. <laughs>